My name is Jackie Wojcik. I have type 1 diabetes and I was diagnosed almost 21 years ago when I was 12 years old. My name is Trina Mathis and I have diabetes type 2. I was diagnosed with diabetes type 2 December 2010. My name is Michelle Shane and I'm 12 years old and I have type 1 diabetes and I was diagnosed with diabetes on my 8th birthday. My name is Stacy Bright. I have type 1 diabetes and I was diagnosed when I was 3 years old. My name is Ian Anderson. I'm a type 2 diabetic and I was diagnosed in 1992. Hi, my name is Kurt Jackson. Uh, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes seven years ago. I'm Sally Jackson. I have type 2 diabetes and I was diagnosed five years ago. I'm Sherry Criswell. I'm the executive director for the American Diabetes Association of North Florida in South Georgia. I've been working for the association for 17 years now and it truly is a passion for me. Um, while my grandfather passed away from symptoms of diabetes, both of my parents also have diabetes. And so, um, as the mother of three children, when the CDC said that um, one out of three children born in the year 2000 would develop diabetes complications if um, current trends didn't change, um, that really um, resonated with me. Probably the big thing about diabetes that I hate is how different it is every day. So um, there's no one way to do everything that's going to work out every single time. The one thing I hate about having diabetes type 2 is taking the medicine. You constantly have to make sure that your blood sugar is right where it is and you're not too high or too low. How could you forget that? Well, how could you miscount? Well, how could you that mistakes can't be made? I think a lot of people without the disease have no idea um, the struggle that is to, to be perfect all the time. If you had a cold every single day of your life and you were, had to make sure you brought everything with you you needed for your cold, cough medicine, cough, uh, cough drops, antibiotics, every single day for the rest of your life, four to six times a day, would you be perfect? Probably not. <laughs> People saying that I can't get pedicures you can still get pedicures when you have diabetes. Sometimes my friends, they're always um, saying like, what's that in your pocket, is that a cell phone? And then I have to go through the whole long story about explaining about the diabetes. But in a way that is good because then um, you're still educating other people about diabetes and explaining to them what it is. You can't eat that or People ask me, how can you eat that? Um, especially, you know, in the work kitchen, if I'm eating a cupcake or a donut or something, somebody's brought in this big batch of Dunkin' Donuts and someone will try to stop me and tell me I can't do it. If I get a pedicure and I get cut, that I will have to have my toes amputated. <laughs> yes, and I was like, that is so untrue, <laughs> so untrue. There was one time where a girl I sit next to in my science class when she found out I had diabetes, she just assumed that because her grandpa has type 2 diabetes, she just assumed that everyone with diabetes was old and fat, so <laughs> that was a big misunderstanding. Well, a lot of times people will see me when I'm training for the Tour de Cure and they'll say, you really shouldn't do that because, you know, you could pass out and nobody would know it. And I, I'm just like, you know, we really need to exercise. There's a lot of misinformation about diabetes. It's, it's rampant. Um, people don't understand the disease and so that's a big part of our mission is education. I'm really tired of hearing that people with diabetes have done something um, to themselves to develop this disease. Um, for type 1 children and adults, they've done absolutely nothing to develop type 1 diabetes. Um, it's an autoimmune disorder and nothing they've eaten or done has caused them to get that disease. And also for the type 2 population, um, you know, there is a genetic aspect to type 2 diabetes. And so if there's one thing I would love to do is create better awareness and better education so that those stigmas don't exist anymore and that people with diabetes can admit that they have it and, and own it and live a long, healthy life with diabetes. Um, when I was four years old, I was at a birthday party for a friend at a McDonald's and I just remember uh, being very, very thirsty and constantly getting a refill on my little kid-sized drink um, and going to the bathroom every five minutes because I was 
Uh, my blood sugar was very elevated. Uh, we were, my mom was talking with a friend and her friend mentioned diabetes. So we took our, took, went on our way to the emergency room and uh, we found out my blood sugar was over 700 um, at that time. and was diagnosed there and spent the week in the hospital getting monitored and getting on a good plan on how to control this and manage it. And here I am 22 years later, um, still trying to manage the disease and still trying to fight it. Well, I discovered that I had diabetes because I got sick. I got pneumonia. And uh, when I went to the hospital, the doctor asked me what I'd had for dinner. And I didn't have anything particularly different from any other dinner. And he said, well, your blood sugar is 400. And I said, well, is that bad? And he said, that's very bad. It should be around 80 to 120. So uh, I discovered I was a diabetic and uh, had to start the process of managing that disease. I uh, didn't want to admit that I had diabetes that day because uh, you know I'm an ex-Marine, a Vietnam veteran, and all of those good things. And so that was, it's also because in my mind, that's sort of a stigma and there's something I did wrong. And it's not till recently that I was able to realize that uh, much of it's genetic. I remember being told I had it, but not even with a very high um, sugar score, sugar level. I just couldn't believe it. And I, until actually this year, I would always say I had a um, sugar problem. I never said I have diabetes. Yeah, I just still wanted to, to, to have those good, tasty foods, you know. Um, and I didn't want to put down the fried chicken. You know, I didn't want to put down the grits every day. But those types of food is what caused me to continue to gain weight and, um, and it continued to make me feel bad. And to be honest, when I got diagnosed for having diabetes back in December of 2010, I believe I had it prior to that. When I look at it now, I did have all the signs and the symptoms, but I ignored all of them. And I, I was real stubborn. I didn't want to, you know, make sure I was eating the right types of food. And um, once I got diagnosed with it, I was scared out of this world. I thought that maybe, you know, I was gonna die. You know, seeing that my mom has diabetes type one and she's a brittle diabetic, I, I just, it, it really scared me. But it took for them to tell me I have it for me to do better. Uh, we went through a big process of, uh, I don't know if you wanna call it uh, fight and blame or type thing, <laughs> but uh, it took us a while to get to the point where we both realized we have to help each other with it and that it's, it's uh, not something that we caused as much as it's something that happened to us. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is check my blood sugar. Um, and that is sort of sets the barometer for the day. So if I wake up and my blood sugar is too low, I have to immediately eat something. If it's too high, I'll probably wake up feeling bad and then I have to correct and give myself insulin to bring it down. I have to check my sugar to make sure that it's at a certain, you know, level. Um, and I have to make sure I'm eating the right types of food. Typically, I wake up and then I have to check my blood sugar. And then I have to go and find out what my carbs are for my breakfast. And then once I go to school, then repeatedly through the day, I have to check my blood sugar to make sure I'm okay for tests and everything. And my day is pretty much filled with giving myself insulin and pricking my fingers to find out what my blood sugar is. Because I'm type one, I wear an insulin pump. And so every day I monitor my blood sugar about four, sometimes five or six times a day. Um, I have to make sure that I have food with me at all times and glucose tablets and that I'm able to, you know, to test and do the things I need to do and get that exercise in every day. Every morning I start my day not just brushing my teeth, I actually have to do a blood test. <laughs> I have to make sure my um, numbers are in line. That and stabbing myself in the finger seven or eight times a day, I guess those are the, those are the things that stand out. And weighing food and reading carbohydrate counts. Well, without my diabetes, I really never would have gotten into biking and now that's my favorite hobby. So I'm really thankful I did get the diabetes because then that led me to a new thing that is healthy and fun at the same time. 
Well, I think that it has really reinforced my spiritual beliefs because, you know, probably without it, I wouldn't have known at an early age, you know, that you could actually pass away. And, you know, people have that complex when they're younger that, oh, they're invincible. And I never had that. So not having that, I think I take every day and enjoy it to its utmost and its fullest. The positive thing about diabetes is it made me more aware of my body. So uh, first thing I did is I remembered as a kid, what's the most the fun thing you ever did as a kid? And it was ride a bike. So uh, I bike every day, sometimes upwards of 20 to 30 miles, depends on the weather. Uh, I've lost over 140 pounds. Uh, so in that time, I've maintained a, a healthy weight for my structure and size uh, for the last uh, 15 or so years, so. And you know what, once I found out and I started getting mobile, the, the weight dropped off, and uh, that's the positive thing. Well, first thing I tell you is that, uh, well, that you're welcome to the club. Uh, you're going to need uh, to really pay attention closely to what your doctor tells you, your endocrinologist. And once you learn how to manage the disease, it isn't all that hard. It really isn't. Make sure that you continue to follow up with your doctor's appointments and make sure that you eat healthy. And when you eat healthy, don't look at it as being a diet that you're on. It's not a diet, it's just a new way of life. One thing I would say is that it's not the end of the world. Because when, when I first got diabetes, I was all worried, saying, oh my gosh, am I going to die? Or is this going to be the end of my life? Am I still going to be able to go to school? But um, yeah, you just have to keep calm and you do have to be a little bit more careful, but sometimes that is a good thing. To take the very best care they can of themselves with their diet and their exercise and to make sure that, you know, they are the healthiest that they can be so that when there's a cure that they can receive it. Listen to the, the professionals around you, but don't, don't always count on them. Uh, listen to other people who have diabetes because many times they can tell you more about it than the professionals can. I would say definitely to take a diabetes education class because even reading literature, which I had read, but listening to the diabetes educator, it was like A plus B equals C. I mean, it was just so easy. And I think one of the biggest things that, that I really realized was that I thought, okay, four people have diabetes. You just give medicine to each one and it works and it you know helps but no every single person is different. Um, take it day by day. Uh, don't get worried about the one high blood sugar you have or the one low you have. You can you can do something about it every day and you gotta kinda take it easy and not stress over it. Whether you process it slow or fast it's important that you understand it because if you don't understand it you're never gonna recover or find a balanced life. You'll always be in trouble. So you need to be able to process it and know exactly what it's doing to your body because it's not doing anything good to your body. And uh, you have to decide how long you really want to live. I have nine beautiful grandsons and a little granddaughter. And so I have a soccer team that wants their grandfather to play soccer with them. And the only way I'm going to do that is by being healthy. The American Diabetes Association has a number of resources available for people with diabetes and I just encourage you to go on our website at diabetes.org, that's www.diabetes.org. Um, anything you could want is on that website. If you don't have access to the web, just call 1-800-DIABETES and we can send literature free of charge. Um, you can also contact our local office at 904-730-7200.